Hi everybody and welcome to our training video on adding a new subscriber in Benefits 24-7. And as your presenter today, I'd just like to quickly introduce myself. My name is Debbie Crumples and I'm a member of the Outreach and Training Unit within the Employee and Retiree Benefits Division. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so first, just know that the preferred web browser for logging into Benefits 24-7 is Chrome. And here's a link that will take you to the Benefits 24-7 training environment. Because for now, it is only a training environment until the live version of Benefits 24-7 is available on the PEB Benefits Administrator website in early May. I would also like to address right up front that most of you are currently entering your new employees into Pay One at the same time that you receive the employees enrollment forms. But with benefits 24 seven, adding a new subscriber and then enrolling that subscriber and their dependents into their elected benefit options will be two separate processes. And that's because your employees will now be able to self-enroll in Benefits 24-7 under their own login. So with Benefits 24-7, it's a two-step process where you as the BA will enter some general information about them and then the employee can go into the system and do their own enrollment. So that's the reason we've broken these into two training videos. And here's another really important piece of information when adding new subscribers to Benefits 24-7. And I will demonstrate this in more detail once we get into the application here in a few minutes. So for state agency, community and technical college, and any other employer type BAs who currently key new employee information into their own systems. And that system then feeds employee demographics information into HCA's pay one system. You will continue to enter your newly eligible employees demographics information into the system that you currently use. And you will enter these employees eligibility information and benefits 24 seven. And for all other employer type BAs, you'll be entering your new subscribers demographic and eligibility information into benefits 24 seven. And here's another really important piece of information for our employer groups that HCA has previously keyed into pay one for you. And that is that you will now be keying your new employees into benefits 24 seven. And just one final note before I start the demonstration. So as you know, benefits 24 seven has been designed to allow your employees to do their own enrollment within the application. So for your employees who would like to utilize this feature, and don't want to do their enrollment using paper forms where you would then have to key their enrollment for them, it's just going to be really important that you key them into Benefits 24-7 as a new subscriber or employee as soon as you can. And this is because they can't do their own enrollment in the system until you have entered them as a new subscriber. Also, the sooner you key them, then that will give them the most days within their 31 day eligibility window to go ahead and utilize the self enrollment process. Okay, so as you can see, I am logged into the benefits administrator dashboard for the Department of Ecology. So let's go ahead and add a new subscriber. So on the Manage Subscribers tile, I'm going to go ahead and click there. And then over here to the right, there is an option you can click on for adding a new subscriber. And I'm going to click on that. And the system is going to ask me for the new subscribers, social security number, and their date of eligibility. So we'll go ahead and key in the social security number and we'll make the date of eligibility today. You were hired today, 2023. Okay, see this box here? It basically says that the date entered is less than the current lower limit period. 
that's just kind of a warning more than anything. It's not saying that that date is, it's just saying please take a look at that date and make sure that it's not. So if you're good on the date, just go ahead and click next and then click next again. So I'm going to stop the demonstration for just a minute because I wanted to share with our BAs from state agency employers, our community and technical college employers, and any other employers whose employee demographics information is first entered into your own system and then that demographics information feeds into Benefits 24-7. So for you, once you go into Benefits 24-7 to add a new subscriber and key their social security number and date of eligibility that you will come to this screen where you're going to get this record found message which just means that the system is recognizing that employee's social security number and it's also going to give you the employee's name so that you can verify that you have the correct employee and then all you need to do is click on the claim button so the system will go out and claim your new employee's demographics information and automatically populate that data into benefits 24-7. And then once you claim that employee, this is the screen that will come up. And this is the same screen that's gonna come up for all employers. The only difference is that for employers whose employee data feeds into benefits 24 seven, some of this information will already be populated for you. And for all other employers, then you're gonna to need to keep all of this information for your new subscribers. And here's something really cool, and this does apply to all employer types, that the eligibility date that you keyed on the previous screen will automatically determine and populate the coverage effective date. So when you see this coverage effective date, you'll just wanna double check that it's correct, and if it isn't, then that will be a clue to you that maybe the eligibility date that you keyed on the previous screen might be incorrect. So I will go ahead and enter an employee with the name of Donald Smith. I will go over to this employee's birth date and enter this. Yes, it brings up kind of a funny little message that says this date makes the employee older than 110 years old. I don't have an answer for that. I just say key past it and ensure that you get the birth date correct at this point. Um, just know that our system is not 100% at this time. We are in a training environment and our developers are working feverishly behind the scenes to get all these little quirky things fixed so that when we go live, they will not be there. Okay, so I'm gonna go over to the sex assigned at birth and the gender identity. I'm gonna give it an eligibility reason and there are several reasons there, but I'm gonna choose newly eligible. As you can see, the date of eligibility is pre-populated, 323 from that first screen, and it's gonna automatically provide a coverage effective date of 4-1-2023. Okay, so now down to this option where it asks if the employee is represented. And I am gonna say no, that this employee is not. So when we get to the option for the long-term disability, I just wanted to make a quick note that if you are a benefits administrator from a medical only employer group, then long-term disability is not going to be offered to your employees. So all you have to do here is click no, okay? But if you are any other employer type, then you will be clicking yes here. When it gets to the salary, you can see by this little asterisk, and I did not mention that earlier, but any of the features here that include an asterisk, that just means that that is a required field, that there has to be data in there. So that is a field that is required on salaries. So if you are a benefits administrator from a state agency, then that salary box will already be populated when you get to this screen. We just ask that you confirm that there is something in there. If you are a benefits administrator from a higher education institution or a community college, you do your own invoicing for the long-term disability for your employees who enroll in the employee paid plans. So the salary is not really important 
in benefits 24 7 because the only thing that the salary that we are aware of at this time that it's used for is to go ahead and invoice for the level of LTD plan that the employee might be enrolled in so we just tell you uh, go ahead and just type in 00, zero. Um, it will accept that because you're not required to enter a salary or a not required to have salary information, but the system does require you to enter something there. And if you are from any other employer type, then you do need to include a salary there for your employees. And do remember that when your employee salaries change for any reason, then you would need to manually go out to Benefits 24-7 and update this salary information. For employer groups that the healthcare authority used to key into pay one for you or currently does until we go live with benefits 24 seven, you now will be keen changes to salaries into benefits 24 seven. So you will no longer need to use the insurance eligibility adjustment form to send that in to us to have that done for you because you'll now have the ability to do that for yourselves. So I'm going to go ahead in and put in a salary amount and the hire date as 3-23-2023. Then I'm going to scroll down the page just a little bit to the address and I'm going to go ahead and type an address in and a city and the Washington and the county Oops, let's go here. Whoops, let's go back here and I'm just going to type in a W. It should pick up Washington. I'll go to the county M for Mason and then I'll tab over. That's what you need to be doing is tabbing 98584. Then it will take me down here to a mailing address. Well, if their mailing address is different than their physical address, then you can certainly enter all of that information here. But I'm going to go ahead and click on same mailing address and I'm going to go ahead and submit that. Okay, so now we're going to go back up to the top of that screen and we are going to go search for that employee that we just entered. So in this search box, I'm going to type in the employee's last name, Smith. I am going to go over here and click on search. And voila, there is Donald Smith, the employee we just entered into benefits 24 seven. So I'm gonna put a little check mark next to that employee's name and to look at their information, all I have to do is go into manage this associated subscriber. And then when you come down a little bit, you'll see right here that you are currently managing that employee, Donald Smith. And here is the benefits administrator tabs or dashboard. So when you click behind this eligibility tab, here is where all of that information is going to be populated. So you can see the employee's name, social security number, all the things that we went through already in entering that employee. I will go ahead and click on their address and as you can see there is the address information that we entered for the employee so that's how it is captured this is also going to some of the data will also populate to the profile tab which is right here and as you can see if you click on the employee's name you will see their general information their name their social security number their birth date and their sex and gender gender identity if you go down to their address this is where you will see their address here as well and their mailing address if they had a different address at this time your subscriber has been entered into benefits 24 7. so let's go back up to the employees dashboard up here click on that. Just know that once you have entered your newly eligible employees into benefits 24 seven, they can now go into their benefits 24 seven account and they can begin their enrollment process. And we aren't going to cover that in today's video that will be covered in the enrollment video, but it's just key to know that once that's in there, that's when they're time starts rolling that they can enroll in their benefits so the sooner you do that then the more of those 31 days that they're going to be able to go in and do that enrollment and benefits 24 7. 
So now that you know how to add a new subscriber to Benefits 24-7, here are some follow-up resources in the event that you have any questions about Benefits 24-7. So first, you can send us your questions through the HCA support portal, and when you create your ticket, just be sure to select the Benefits 24-7 online enrollment system as your inquiry type. You can also reach out to our outreach and training team at the 800 number that's listed here. And even though we don't have this available yet, there will be a link coming soon to a Benefits 24-7 Benefits Administrator user guide. And finally, we'll be continuing to create and post some additional detailed training videos for Benefits 24-7. And for that user guide and videos, those will be located on the PEB Benefits Administrator website. So that wraps up our video training on how to add a new subscriber in Benefits 24-7. Thank you for watching.